Life. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm so glad you're with us uh, wherever you are. If you're joining us on television here in the Santa Barbara area at TVSB, we welcome you. And so many of you are joining us around the world at goodlifetelevision.org and the YouTube channel and social media and all these platforms. The podcast is also there. We see that the traffic has increased. So if you're a podcast person, you can go to any podcast platform and you can search under Good Life Conversations. Good Life Conversations is the podcast platform. Uh, so find us anywhere, even Twitter, the darkest place in the world where everybody fights. We don't fight. We bring light. It's fun. So join us even at Twitter. Um, and we're brought to you, as always, by Bunnin Chevrolet. So we're grateful for Leo and our friends at Bunnin. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, my guest today. Uh, well, I'll tell you all about it. It's very fun. Keith and Laura Galloway are with me. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Nice this to is be funny. Here. So, so Laura and I, we went to Westmont together for a period. Mm -hmm. She was kind of a legend. She was Laura Hayes back then. She was a Westmont volleyball player. My wife is sitting right over there. She was a volleyball player. You always encouraged her, by the way. I, I think the I think it's nickname? the other way around. Did you give her a nickname? I did give her a nickname. What was, Ray. Ray. Ray of Light. Ray of Light. Ray of Light. Your maiden name is Ray. Yes, her maiden That's name is Ray. That we, that was encouraged. It's amazing how we remember all these things mm -hmm. from those times. Um, it's so a well-deserved nickname, I'll just say she that. She earned it Dear every God, day because it see, playing yeah. sports in college is grueling, but playing with someone like her makes it not makes, so grueling. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Um, so they have two daughters, Hallie and Emma. Hallie just got married. She's living in Hawaii. Where's Emma? Emma is at Vanguard University. Vanguard. Yeah, and she's right. playing beach volleyball for them. Oh, is she? They really? just won the national tournament. No way. This year, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, we have a lot to catch up on. We do. Okay, so it's been 28 years or whatever. So here we are. <laughs> How the last 28 years? Been? <laughs> yeah. We can sum it up quick. Yeah. Uh, well, Keith, I want to start by thanking you for your service to the country Thank and you. the 10 years active duty in the Navy. Uh, you and then 10 years in reserves mm -hmm. is my understanding. That's correct. And I know that, that that's not easy for the person or the family. Mm -hmm. And so, and I know all the work you guys have done since with families and veterans and sanctuary retreat and all that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, I'm really honored to sit with you. Thank you. Um, it's a high calling. Mm -hmm. Did you always know you wanted to do that? I did not. Uh, I grew up in San Diego, four brothers, um, and we didn't have a lot of money growing up, and so I knew either I was going to get an athletic scholarship somewhere uh, or I was paying for wherever I went to school. And uh, as I got closer, you know, the, uh, to my graduation in high school, I was being recruited by some smaller schools, but Army and Navy were the two D1 programs that were recruiting me for football. And at first, I, 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 first my two older brothers had gone to Navy, and so I knew... I knew the difficulties of, you know, going to a service academy, and I knew there was no way I was going to West Point. So I, I told the, the uh, Army recruiter, I said, no, thank you. Uh, and then Navy, initially I said to my parents, no. And then as I got closer, I thought, well, I do want to play D1 football in college, so I'll go, I'll go to the Naval Academy, totally oblivious to the fact that, you know, it's going to be mean a life of service yeah. um, and what that meant and, and everything. Um, but that's, that's what got me on that journey. What, what position did you play? I was recruited as a running back and ended up playing safety. You did? Mm -hmm. How, what a great experience that is. It, it was, uh, I loved playing. Uh, I will say what still resonates with me today about that experience were the relationships. Yeah. I mean, even yesterday we were communicating with the, the gentleman who played middle linebacker for us, was a Navy SEAL and was the best man in our wedding. Amazing, amazing man. Uh, and, and then the, I would say, you know, the life lessons that come out of playing, like Laura, oh, man. Laura referred to earlier. I mean, playing college sports is, it's not for the faint of heart. Right, uh, so. right. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, so take us from graduation day at the, at the academy, mm -hmm. 1996, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. correct. What do the next 10 years look like for you? I was absolutely fortunate enough to, uh, to get an opportunity to go to flight school. Uh, my class was the first class that they basically allowed you to interview, like I could interview for the, the job that I wanted to do in the Navy. Prior to that, it was all pretty much based on academic uh, 
you know, standing in the class and, and mine wasn't the best. So for all the listeners out yeah. there who are struggling, there's still hope. Um, but uh, so I, I was able to go to flight school and uh, we were married partway through flight school. Uh, amazing, you, you said the legendary Laura Hayes and she was absolutely that for me. Uh, you know, from high school and, and uh, mm -hmm. in through college. And um, so that was an amazing, I didn't even know how good I had it at when I married, uh, yeah. you know, 25 and a half years ago, but my goodness, what a blessing. Uh, and then we, we had Hallie, our, our, you know, our oldest daughter, uh, like a year after we got married, nine, it was, it was uh, faster than we wanted, but, um, <laughs> But amazing blessing to you. And so I uh, went through flight school. Um, I started out thinking I wanted to fly helicopters, then wanted to fly jets. And then when I got to graduation, I decided I want to fly uh, propellers. So I flew a P3. Um, and I loved it. It was, it was an amazing experience. We were stationed in Florida, Texas, um, Washington State. And uh, the P3 is pretty much extinct now. It's an older... It's an old airframe, but Submarine Hunter and uh, Crew of Eleven, which I loved. I, I'm a team-oriented person, so yeah. I enjoyed that. Wow. And what? Uh, talk to us about the transition back to life, yeah. civilian life, mm. and what that's like for somebody. Yeah. So every, I would say every transition in anyone's life is is a potentially difficult one for the veteran in particular. It is. It is difficult and it's uh, surprisingly difficult. It's amazing that how many people actually struggle mm -hmm. in that phase, uh, not just the veteran, but also the families. Um, for me, you know, my last deployment, uh, Emma was born five days after I left. Uh, I left in December of 2001 and uh, we were obviously extremely busy that deployment. Um, there and Laura struggled with postpartum depression uh, I, you know, I didn't get to meet my daughter for an, uh, quite some time. Um, and so, you this know, this is right after 9-11. This is right after 9-11. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, fast forward a couple of years, that, that taste was still in my mouth of when it was time to get out. And I, and I was like, oh, I am, I am not staying in the Navy. I am done with this. Yeah. And, and, you know, a few years after that transition, I was working in a bank and I will never forget this morning. I was getting dressed and I was, you know, dressing similar to how I'm dressed today. Uh, and I saw my flight suit hanging in the back of the closet and it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I just, it wasn't necessarily just the flying. I loved flying. Uh, I missed the people. I missed the mission. I missed that, just everything about that. And, yeah. uh, and I didn't realize how much I missed it and that yeah. that was a journey for us mm -hmm. to process yeah the bank office is not going to be the same <laughs> no offense to wonderful banks, bank, bankers, but no yeah, yeah. it was it was confusing to me this time mm -hmm. because we had where we were he was home every night bankers hours are like nine and two you know yeah. he was coaching um, our girls softball team and we had mornings every morning. We drove the girls to the bus, and he was the least happy he'd ever been. And I thought maybe it was my fault. I thought, I, I mean, it was, it was a very confusing time of like, yeah. wow, we no longer have to be gone. You're here now. We're coming out of the fog of all of the deployments, and it, it now what do we do? broke him. Mm. Yeah. And I'll say, you know, going back to your question about is the transition difficult? It is, but I think it's it's difficult for a few reasons. And my on um, my um, journey in my transition was, uh, in a lot of senses, unhealthy because I really hadn't prepared to the point where I was I was okay not wearing the flag the flag on my sleeve and still being patriotic. You know, I wasn't in a spot mentally and emotionally where I could say, hey, I'm not part of that team anymore, but I'm still part of a team and that experience is still valuable to me, even though I'm not in it anymore, you know? And so, right. so it took a while for me to get there and I just, I just didn't know that I had to get there until, <laughs> until I realized I wasn't there, you know? So there was like some catch up to do. And so what happened in your faith in, that, mm, in those yeah. moments? So I will say that that has been a journey as well. Yeah. Um, because 
in that time, we were leading a youth group. Uh, I, I mean, I was and still am a follower of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I love Jesus, and I know he loves me. And and so that was, I think, another element that was added on for, for Laura and I both that was confusing as to why is this a struggle for me right now. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of prayer and a lot of, you know, a lot of, I think just... Um, in some ways retrospective like okay lord how have i veered off this path yeah how did i get here you know let's backtrack a little bit yeah, help yeah. me get back and uh and get my heart into a spot where it wasn't about me and i think that's where it had gotten it was just focused on what do i miss about service what do i need in my career versus like lord where do you where do you want me and how do you want to use me yeah and how did you work with work together through this yeah. transition? Um, being a Navy wife, so I will say after the 10 years, it, during that time, he left the bank and went back into the Navy for 10 more years and flew for 10 more years and had a nine month deployment in there as well. Oh, wow. I remember having a conversation with him when he was saying, I'm unhappy with the bank. And I said, you, your life is too short to do something you don't love. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And I said, I will support you in whatever it is you're feeling called to do, as long as you're feeling called somewhere and not running from something else. Right. Um, and that's been a 10 year, I think 15, 20 year journey for us since that day of like, how do we make sure, you know, that we're, we're going to something we're called rather than leaving yeah. something we don't want. Mm -hmm. um, being a Navy wife was not at all in my, in my vision. vision, I totally didn't think I had the skills for it um, by any means. And yet it was the best adventure I've, we've ever, we've had. It has shaped, I think, who we and how we experience the world today. Yeah. Um, we, we were able to put stuff, the things we own, in a place really early on because we moved to Naples, Italy and they lost a crate of our stuff <laughs> off the boat or something. And, you know, it's just like, okay, well, stuff is stuff right. and it can be replaced, but people aren't. And so we, it forced us to have that really, I think, pivotal conversation about what we value, what are first things and how do we, in, how do we ensure first things are first yeah. and not get that reversed. Um, also, I think through the journey of being a spouse to this man who was in the service, um, delight is the word that comes to mind. Um, I always missed him when he was gone and have always loved him when he's back. And, and there isn't um, much confusion for me on that. And I think being a Navy wife has kind of helped with the ebbs and flows of the chaos um, of that experience. Yeah. Yeah. I got real clear early on about how mm. much I loved him and how committed I was. Oh. I told you I married up. God likes you. Right? <laughs> God really likes us. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Mm, yeah. You're a powerhouse person. Mm. I, I, like at Westmont, you were ever since all mm. the stuff you've done in higher education, all the mm. stuff. You're this board and committee and this project and this. And like, um, you're, you're all, it sounds to me almost like you, you've got, you're the wife to him, you're a Navy wife, you're the mom to two girls and best, who have best job ever best and who are just <laughs> amazing and then you've got your own whole enterprise like that you're running how did you yeah. juggle all this um i was fortunate enough actually to when he first got out that first 10 years um i was fortunate enough to get a job at the christian school where we met um, and that our girls actually got to go to school. So there was about five years there or so where I was working there um, and got to drive into school with them every day, was coaching volleyball there and their teams. He was coaching one of the baseball teams there. Um, and that was a really sweet time. It was also the time where he felt I, there's the suffering of the transition was also happening. Um, and during that time, I started... Well, actually, I will say this. My first job out of Westmont College after we got married was coaching at a city, an inner city school in South Texas. I was coaching volleyball and teaching PE. 
And I loved it so much. I was like, well, this is it for me. Teaching is it. But it's hard to do when you move every year and a half or so. So I went and got a master's degree because the teaching job required that I get advanced degrees. I went and got a master's degree in organizational leadership because I wanted to be a better coach. I wanted to learn how to lead people better um, and how to create transformation. And I love that subject so much that I went and continued on and got more degrees and more um, education. And that led to teaching in higher ed. Um, and I loved it. And now I'm the associate dean for the School of Business for an online school, um, Un University of Massachusetts, global. And I love it. And I have been able to piece together this sort of the, a, a career that hasn't made me choose and this is a blessing between my family or my career mm -hmm. the career was cooking on the back burner literally mm -hmm. and anytime I could I had to choose between the two I always chose my family and it doesn't seem to have had a negative Working impact out. on my career so you were zoom before it was cool yeah <laughs> yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what amazing so you're in California as an associate dean of UMass Global. Yep, yep, yeah. So you were getting all those degrees while you had the little girls? Just the... chipping away at it. I had to take leave of absence different times. He went on a nine-month deployment, as I had mentioned, um, and I was working on my PhD at the time, and I just took a break from that and said, my girls need my eye contact time, and I need their eye contact time <laughs> while he's gone. So, yeah, I just... Wow did what I could when I when I needed to do it um, but I'm not an ambitious person but I'm hardworking there's a big difference I'm not very ambitious it sounds like I am I'm not you, <laughs> just hard work but you decide what you're gonna do it you just do it I just do it I just chip away at it when I can yeah wow tell us a little bit about your girls mm. <laughs> and son-in-law and now son-in-law son -in -law, yeah our girl, I mean, like anybody's kids, they're, they're, it's so fun to see as they've grown older how they are, you know, pieces and parts of Laura and I uh, mm -hmm. in their personality and how they, like Hallie is so hardworking and she's very much like me. I am a put my head down and just go through a wall to get something done. Laura is a, is a work smarter, not harder, and, you know, she'll figure out how to maneuver well. That's Emma. Um, and uh, it's, so, it's so fun. Um, athletically, because we're similar in that, you know, athletically, I'm, I'm going to run down the field and hit somebody. And Laura is an amazing uh, athlete, but also, like, a, on the court as far as, like, an athlete, she's, she's very mental in how she approaches a game. She's strategic. She's like, she knows the game. She studies it. Again, I'm like, I'm gonna put my head through you, you know? Um, and, and so seeing that play out, Hallie was an amazing outside hitter at Westmont. Um, phenomenal athlete. She can swing, like put the ball down. Emma's very smart and knows the strategy of the game. And so it's just, it's fun to see those differences. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hallie is, was an art major at Westmont. And she was part of the team her junior year that made it as far as any volleyball team has gone, second wow. in the nation. She was the outside hitter for that. Wow. So that was fun to watch that journey um, with her. Hallie also, like me, is an extreme introvert um, as well. And so just has, um, art was her expression and her voice. And that was wonderful to watch her journey um, yeah. through her art. Um, and now is a writer and loves to write. And I, the discipline part, her junior year in high school decided she wanted to write a book. So she disciplined herself two hours every day to write um, her novel. And she would do it every day without fail. I think she's still doing she's it still today. Writing, yeah. Uh, it, so, no yeah, just a hard, hard worker. Emma um, has changed her major a couple times. You know, she's like, she studies everything. She's got a, you know, she will put together a plan. Um, she always has a plan. Uh, so she is just extremely strategic is the best word to describe her. And they're both just delights. They bring Does so Emma much know joy. Does what she wants to do after Vanguard? Not she yet. Mm -mm. Not yet. Yeah. Mm -mm. Emma can have a room laughing and, and dancing. Yes. I mean, is that right? She, yeah. Oh, she's so She she's just so got fun. back from a two-week um, missions trip in Ireland. 
uh, last oh, night. Oh, really? Yeah. And the little videos we've seen have been <laughs> phenomenal. They're yeah. So fun. She was the MC so of the kids' camp. Yeah. These yeah. are powerhouse. You guys are a powerhouse. <laughs> the whole family. Are you going to plant here in Santa Barbara? As far as you know? It's a great question. As far as we know, yes. I, I actually tell people as many homes as we've had and many places that we've lived, this feels more like home than any other place yeah, I've, I've been. God's going to have to work out a whole bunch of miracles, <laughs> and He can to make that work. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind that He yeah, can. We're with you. Um, he has our yes, and anytime we give Him our yes, it always blossoms into something more beautiful than yeah, I could imagine. I agree. Yeah. Well, if you guys are going to be here, then we're here. We can be friends. Absolutely. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Done. Accepted. We're in. <laughs> we'll That's be good. here tomorrow. My son plays safety. <laughs> Where? Santa, Santa Barbara High. Oh, wonderful. So yeah. I need you to, like, coach him up. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. Did you play in a bowl game? I did. Is that a bad question? Sorry. It's not. <laughs> no. my, so my four years we were there, we were not very good. My best, I think our best record was, like, five and six or something. The year after I graduated, they, uh, they had a winning season and beat Cal in the Aloha Bowl. Uh, really? In Hawaii. In Hawaii. No no I, I was watching from home. Oh. Like, One year! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just missed it. Just missed it. Yeah, so, that's cool. um, just quickly, the, so you've done a lot of work with, we have an interest in veterans. Transition. Yes. Have, there's a podcast out there you can find uh, for the Galloways. There's the, the you've been on the board of Sanctuary Retreat, which is an amazing. Is that still going? It's still going. Um, I got them through COVID, essentially. Um, but, uh, we, I had to step down from that. As I mentioned, when I have to choose between family, right. I always chose mm -hmm. family. I had yeah. to step down from the Project Sanctuary Board um, because my dad had fallen, broken his hip, and um, was dealing with some early Parkinson's and dementia. Oh. And so we moved in and helped with that um, during COVID. And I couldn't juggle career, yeah. child That's in high lot. school, or trying to get a child through high school through COVID, which was difficult. Yeah. Um, and then also support my parents. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so that had to drop to the wayside, but they, <coughs> they are still they doing are still their growing. retreats and they are doing wonderful things and healing families who are in service. What's the name of the podcast? It's still, I know it's still, I know you I don't think you're recording anymore, but it's out there. What is the name of it? It's called Homebound Veteran. Homebound yeah. Veteran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's on any platform. Any podcast podcast. So Homebound yeah. Veteran, if you want to listen to that, that's a, that's a great, uh, so... Man, there's a lot here. <laughs> so what what is hmm. what, what has God made clear to you to whatever degree you can understand it or clear or are clear about it about hmm. what the future holds? Well, you know it's funny. I mean, anytime I ha I have to look at my resume, uh, you know I think it, it, this thought has come up to me of like a resume is great because it tells what I've done. Um, but it has nothing really to do. It can be somewhat of a predictor of what I'm going to do, but it definitely isn't an assurance of what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, Laura referred to this or said this earlier. It's like, Jesus has our yes. And so what we do on a daily basis, you know, tomorrow, but next year and, and, and um, is, is continuous to show up and say yes to Jesus. I, I love, there's Proverbs 14, 4. It says, uh, where there are no ox, the stable is clean, uh, but abundant crops come by the work of an ox. And so, you know, the work of the, work of the Lord can be messy. Um, yeah. We've seen that, and yet we're not going to have a harvest unless we get in there and roll up our sleeves and do the work. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, part of that is, is showing up and saying yes. Uh, we have a heart for uh we've led youth groups we're obviously engaged in sports and athletics and so we've linked up with fca here in santa barbara yes. and uh really like the warners are just amazing people right. um yeah. so we're mm -hmm. we actually just got back from kansas city yesterday um and uh so we're starting to work with fca we have a heart for the children the next generation that yes. are coming up and i shouldn't even say children young men and women uh high school college who uh, I feel like are in a very formative stage and period in their lives where they're trying to figure out, am I, who am I, where am I going? Yep. Who is this, you know, God and, and am I going to follow them and follow him? And, um, and so I, I just feel like Laura and I have a wonderful opportunity to, to speak into that process. I love that. So. That's that. You should do that. <laughs> 
I love it. Yeah. Yeah. FCA is great, but I mean, just me, young men. Yeah. Yeah. I can just see you doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, I, I think about that all the time, just because we have two teenage boys, mm -hmm. you know, 17 and 15, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, do they need mm -hmm. training and guidance and hope and vision. And, mm -hmm. and you know what the thing is about the service that you've done? Mm -hmm. There's nobility. Mm -hmm. I think nobility and for young men especially, young women as well, is kind of a lost thing. I want to do something noble with my life. Mm. Like, they think about that at the Naval Academy. Mm. They don't think about that at Santa Barbara High. Just, you know, I hate to, I'm not That's... breaking any news, I don't think. But I mean, <laughs> it's not, it, like what, a noble calling, uh, mm. something about other people, yeah. patriotism. Mm. service above self like I just yeah. these are kind of some throwback things now almost mm. that I feel like guys like you and I need to keep and mm. and us mm -hmm. going yeah. does that make sense it does it does I'm not trying to give a speech here but no it, it no, resonates for sure <laughs> yeah I think you're absolutely right on and I think too at this age is it, you know part of it is what why am I here on this earth yes and, and you it know, can't some, be for TikTok alone. No, <laughs> there <laughs> must be something it's out there. Very empty. <laughs> but that's the, it's all empty. That's yeah. the low hanging fruit, right? Is yeah. is social media, video numbing, games? Numbing, and I, numbing. You know, I'm not yeah. throwing stones, but um, but I do think like it does take work. It does take being uh, purposeful, and yeah. you know, like you mentioned of of having vision. Of it, it's not going to magically appear this amazing life where you can say hey i've done something valuable right uh you, you gotta put the work in every that's day. right that's right that's right oh i love that and i should say you got to put the work in but it's in partnership with the lord and, and yes. when that's the case then uh, that's a that's a great journey he can do anything yeah he's he, that's what amazes me about god is mm -hmm. how big he is i love you mm -hmm. little thing he has our yes that's great mm -hmm. that's right Mm -hmm. We're in. Yeah. Whatever it is, Lord, you know, when you, especially when you've been through some suffering mm -hmm. and you've been down some journeys, some roads, and like, you know, the answer is yes. I don't know what the question is necessarily. <laughs> the answer is yes. You know, what a, so that's sure. kind of a simple way of, okay, I don't know what it is, but it's yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's beautiful. Yeah. I love this. Mm -hmm. We're out of time. We're out of time already. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thanks for great. having us. Great road. Love great, it. yeah, testimony. Great to be with you guys. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.